Well, good morning. <laughs> I, I was looking at the screen in, in high anticipation of something being up there. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, just a, a couple of things. Um, I, I did a quick count uh, when I came in this morning and looking at the congregation. And, and here's just a, a reality of, of where we are. Um, this, uh, according to our Constitution, is the uh, first Sunday after the first Tuesday of December. Um, and at that Sunday, we have a congregational meeting at the end of the service. In order for that congregational meeting to be official, you need to have 35 people present. Um, unless a bunch of people come in after the service, which I believe is highly unlikely, uh, we will probably need to reschedule that. Uh, in talking with John, um, we're going to try a couple of things. We'll reschedule in two weeks, according to the Constitution, we have to give the congregation two weeks' notice uh, for a congregational meeting. And so, officially, you're noticed. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we'll have that, that then... Um, what we're going to do is allow people to be able to zoom in, uh, to be able to be counted as present. Now, there's some details we'll have to work up on that, um, but it would be best if everybody is here, but we'll have that as an option, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to put all the Zoomer folks Zoomer folks, on the screen uh, so that we'll be able to see who's Zooming in uh, to be able to make that work, uh, to be able to be counted so that we can have our vote. So that will be in two weeks on December the 20th. You're visiting with us. Totally ignore that previous entourage of information. Um, but um, it, it's an open meeting. Everyone is, I mean, you're all invited to come. Um, it will be a very short meeting. We will be voting for offices for our council and on our budget, and we're going to keep that meeting pretty much just to that so that it will go rather quickly due to the pandemic and Zoom and everything else that's going on along with that. And so um, we'll probably make an official at the end of the service, but I'm pretty sure that that's not going to be able to happen. Okay, um, the Mountain Vision Tree, uh, today is the last day to get gifts in. Uh, if you took a, a yellow slip uh, to buy gifts for Mountain Vision, uh, they'll be picking those gifts up on Wednesday and taking them down. And so tomorrow we'll be doing inventory and making phone calls to those folks uh, that possibly have forgotten to bring them back. Um, but um, the, please, uh, if you've got them in your car, make sure you bring them in this morning. Um, remember, our Christmas Eve service will be on the 24th at 6.30. Uh, we will be having a Christmas Eve service, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, and then the Sunday after that, uh, the 27th, uh, we're going to have a celebration Sunday. Um, that Sunday um, has been very special in the past where different individuals from the congregation are participating in that. It could be special music or, or something else. There's some options or some thoughts there in the bulletin. But if you've got an idea, see John, John Nixon, and he's putting that service together. Um, and uh, it's, always, it's always really good, and it always, it always works. It's always a little nervous prior to, but it always works. And so um, looking forward to that Sunday, the 27th. A um, couple of prayer requests. Um, Dick Hahn had surgery this past week. Everything went well, and he is back home recovering. Um, we also keep Edna Romick in your prayers. Uh, she is across the street at hospice care. Um, Long term, uh, she does have a brain tumor and they don't really offer her any hope. Um, and so it's merely walking down the road at this point. Uh, was asked this morning, how long does she have? And I'll be completely honest. I was able to converse with her on Friday. We talked, we shared, uh, and uh, it was a very good time together. Um, she sometimes gets her words mixed up and has to try a couple of times to get them out or to rephrase. Um, but she's feeling pretty spunky, I guess is the way I would say that. Um, they have pretty much told her there's a progression um, and there's already she has seen some things um, come her direction. Uh, but they really don't know. Um, but, you know, we're talking weeks 
Um, not, not days, probably weeks, but you just never know in this circumstance. She said she's ready to go and see Jesus. And if she said, if there's a way, I'll send you a text. So she still has her sense of humor. It was good to chat with her. Uh, they have given me permission to come and see her um, as often as I desire. And so um, we'll continue doing that in the days and weeks to come. Also, we have been asked to pray for Ed Yund. That is Carol Mills' father. Uh, he is in Cleveland Clinic, uh, Cleveland Hospital in Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic. Um, he's struggling. Um, he's having some trouble concentrating, and they're just not sure uh, what the future holds or what direction, whether this is something that he'll come out of or not. Um, just a lot of questions and not many answers, and so please keep Ed in your prayers. And then always uh, remember those um, that have uh, been uh, tested positive for COVID uh, and everything along with that um, in, in our congregation as well as our state, country, and, and our world. So let's uh, have a word of prayer together. Our Father and our God, we lean upon your word. And Lord, in your word, you tell us that, that your love for us is great and that you're always there for us. You never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, 2020 has been a tough year and, and it's not changing as we look to the future. And Lord, we just ask that you would be with us as a congregation to guide and direct and to help us into the future. But Lord, we put this whole world in your hands, acknowledging that you have called it into existence. And Lord, we look forward to the day when we walk with you for all eternity. But while we are here, we need your ongoing presence, your guidance, and Lord, your healing power. And there's just a number of folks that are in need. Uh, we think of, of Dick and for surgery, and there's, there's been several others. There's been knee replacements and hip replacements and different individuals. We just ask, Lord, that you would carry that healing on to completion, and, Lord, that the good news would continue to roll in. And we give you praise and honor for all that you're doing, for you truly are a great and gracious God that meets us where we are. But Lord, for those that are struggling, and Lord, we think of the pandemic and the COVID and everything involved with that, we just ask, Lord, that you would continue to walk with us as a world as we look to find a cure, an immunization, a vaccine uh, to assist us in overcoming this. We rely on you and ask, Lord, that you would impart that gift to us. And Lord, just continue to watch over those that are struggling. There are some that are fighting for their very lives this moment. And we ask that you would be there and working. We ask for your ongoing healing touch and your healing power. Lord, watch over these folks. And Lord, there's several other folks, and some are, have been sick, and some are in the hospital, and some have recuperated. And Lord, we put them all in your hands, your great and loving hands. Give them your strength. Grant unto them your, your love, that they might know of your presence each and every day. Lord, assist us that we might continue to sing your praises for all that you're doing, for all your intervention, and for, for, for your saving grace that you give to us as a, as a society, as a world, as humankind. That, Lord, at Christmas we might see this tremendous gift in the giving of your Son, the meaning of that, that gift giving that you have done for us, that, Lord, we might share it with the world that needs to hear. Lord, continue to be with and walk with us in all these things. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As we continue the preparation for Christmas, we call this Advent. Uh, each Sunday, uh, we have a different individual come and do a reading and then light a candle on our Advent wreath that's behind me. And this week, it's Sue. Sue Amstutz is going to come and uh, light the Advent candle this morning. This reading is from John 1, verses 6 through 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. <clears throat> the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. John had an acute understanding of who God is. John drew many people out of the darkness and into the light. The Holy Spirit was with him with such great power that many people thought that John might be the light. But John was not the light. He was only a witness to the light. John came for one purpose, to turn others toward the light. He came to turn others toward the true light. Everything John was about, everything John did, and everything that John said was to turn people away from himself and towards the light. John was all about the light. <clears throat> okay. The people are living in darkness, but look, there in the distance, coming our way is the true light that gives light to everyone. This morning, we light the first and second candles to show that John's testimony is for us also. We too look to the light, and that light is none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, there have been many godly people, and there have been many spiritual people, but no one holds a candle to you. You are the light. You are the one who gives us new life. All true witness point to you, for you are God incarnate, Jesus. Be the light this Advent and show us how to live for you. Amen. Ready to share some light through song? Would you please stand and join me in singing a couple of hymns this morning? First one is Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing and the mountains in reply echo back their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. This day, oh. come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Oh, adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Oh, oh. 
Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. See within a manger laid Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid with us sing our Savior's birth. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Now, angels from the realms of glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with man is now Siding, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching on in hope and fear. Ending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Oh, and in now we view him, he will share his Father's throne. Gather all. To him, every knee shall then bow down. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. You may be seated. The virgin is delivered in a cold and crowded stall. Mirror of the Father's glory lies beside here in the straw. He is mercy's incarnation, marvel at this miracle for the virgin. Glorious, impossible. 
love has come to walk on water turn the water into wine touch the leper bless the children love both human and divine praise the wisdom of the father who has spoken through his son speaking still he calls us to the glorious impossible And he bears eternal scars He was raised for our salvation And his righteousness is ours Praise, oh praise him, praise the Father Of his lavish grace so full Lift your souls now and receive the glorious Hallelujah, 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 glorious impossible, hallelujah. Of his lavish grace so full lift your souls now and receive the glorious impossible glory glory hallelujah glory glory Hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, Our scripture this morning found in the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 14. Luke 2, 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will be cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Thank you, Father, for your precious word. I'm going to 
just set this over here. You know, there's a lot of things that we do at Christmas time, and there's a lot of traditions, and, and sometimes did you ever wonder why we do some of the things that we do? Uh, one of my favorite things is shaking hands. Now, I know we can't do that now. We, we, we bump fists, we bump elbows, we air hug, we do a lot of things, but, but why, why did it get started for shaking hands? And I, I've done some research and to find out why. And so I found out that the reason we shake hands is because you always shake hands with your right hand, and most people are right-handed, and so you trace it back far enough when you would see a stranger coming if you extended your right hand towards them as an offer of friendship, you couldn't draw your sword to attack, and so it was, I'm a friend. And today, isn't that the same thing? I mean, the reality is we welcome one another and we basically say, I'm a friend. And we offer a handshake. And if it's greeted, then, you know, the conversation begins. If you've ever had a handshake refused, you kind of go, because we don't know what we're supposed to do. Um, and and we, we kind of gingerly walk forward. Another, another thing that we have, I was asked when I was a youth pastor, is, okay, why can't we wear a hat inside a building? Now, I was quick on the draw, and I told the young man, because if your father found you, finding, wear, found you wearing a hat inside a building, he'd slap you upside the ear. So that was reason enough not to do that. But when doing some research to find out where this cultural custom uh, came about and don't wear a hat in a building, it's traced clear back before electricity when everything was oil lamps and the like. And inside a building, it was always dark. And if you wear a hat, you can't see somebody's face, so you don't know if they're friend or foe. So if you take your hat off when you come inside a building, it was much easier to see someone's face, and the custom began. But there's a lot of things that we continue to do. At Christmas time, we put lights on our houses, you know, and, and I always thought you put lights on your houses because it's kind of the light of Jesus coming into the world and shine the light in the darkness and all of that, and I'm not so sure that that's kind of where it came from. There's a story that I found, a uh, connection with the Norse god Odin and his fondness for beer and an you'll log, but and we, we have these, but we can reset in so many ways and say this is why we do what we do. Christmas tree is another one of those traditions that we have that who knows exactly where it got started and how there's some in Roman mythology, there's 16th century in the German culture, might have been Martin Luther, who knows, but we have these traditions, and there's nothing wrong with traditions as we bring them forth as long as they follow what God is telling us, and sometimes we need to repurpose things like we have done for, at least at my house, if there's lights on the Christmas tree, um, it's because of Jesus' light and bringing into the world and these things, and believe me, when I shake your hand, I mean I am a friend. But here we have the Christmas traditions and everything that's going on in the world in which we live. And we have the angels that came and they appeared to the shepherds. And clear down in verse 14 is kind of the nugget that I want to get at this morning. And it's, it's that proclaiming peace part. Do we proclaim peace? Much the world takes a moment and pauses for the holiday, but I'm guessing most of them don't even know why. Praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. An angel sharing the good news of joy for all people that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem. It's not a proclamation of world peace because we know at that time and at every time since there's never really been world 
peace. Jesus didn't come to proclaim world peace. What he did, he came to proclaim a peace that might be received in our relationship with God by being put in a right relationship with him because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That peace is what's being proclaimed, that peace that comes from knowing God in your heart, peace that comes from having that relationship with a God that loves us so much that he removes the penalty of sin from us. The barrier is gone, and we have peace with God. That's the peace that the angel is declaring. The Expositor's Bible Commentary says, Those on whom God's favor rests are the little children to whom God graciously reveals truth according to his good pleasure. So many times we miss the simplicity of peace. In our hearts, are we at peace with the God that loves us? Because when we are at peace, peace with the God that loves us, that relationship can grow. That relationship can can begin to be able to be seen in the world that's around us. And if we're really going to proclaim peace, if we're really going (coughs) to share with the world the difference that God has made in our hearts, um, we, we have to really be able to proclaim that peace, that difference that's been made in our hearts. And if we proclaim that peace, we share with the world the difference that God has made. They call that a testimony. And each and every one of us that know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have a testimony. Now, I've heard people say, yeah, but, but you know, my testimony is not that great. And I said, well, tell it to me. Well, I was raised in the church. I said, that's good. It means you come from a lineage of people who serve God. That's a good thing. Well, yeah, and I received Jesus as my Savior at church camp when I was, you pick the age, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe several times therein. I said, yeah. Well, and I've always lived for him. I said, yeah. And they said, what else is there? And I said, that's just it. Nothing. What a wonderful thing. Wouldn't it be great to have been raised in a family that serves God and then made that decision to serve God before you did anything really bad? I mean, you know, your, 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 your biggest demons are eating too much turkey at Thanksgiving. The biggest drawbacks in, in, in your life is maybe you bought the red car when the blue one was a better fit. I mean, Oh, Lord, bless the person that those are the struggles they're in. So many of us don't have that story. Maybe we weren't born into a good family. Maybe we had the rebellious years that became a little more rebellious than we're willing to admit. Maybe we've done things that were an affront to the God that loves us anyway. But are we willing to proclaim the peace, to share the difference that God has made for us, whether it's in our mind, great or small? Because the story is the proclaiming of peace. You see, in order to proclaim peace, we have to pass the peace along. And are we willing to do that? Are we willing to share the stories of what God is doing In our hearts, the angels came, and they proclaimed the peace. They shared it with the shepherds. You know, it's kind of interesting that that the angel shared it with the shepherds of all people. God was telling the world that wherever you are and whoever you are, that God is there for you, and you are important. Remember that little uh, cartoon? I, I've seen it's been all over Facebook. It makes its rounds every few years. You know, um, it, it basically has a little, a little, little child there, and 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 basically it's that acceptance that God doesn't make any junk. And the truth of the matter is, every person upon this earth, Jesus came to earth for them, for you. For us. And that peace offering of 
reconciliation with God that was brought and heralded by the angels was passed to the shepherds. And what was the response of the shepherds? They made a beeline for the manger. They wanted to see this gift that God had given that they might understand what God was going to do. Passing the peace. Matthew chapter 5 verse 9 tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Now I want to make a difference there, uh, draw, draw a line. There's, we hear a lot about peacemaking and we hear a lot about peacekeeping. You know, whenever the United Nations sends forces to different places throughout their, the world, they're on a peacekeeping mission. Their goal is to keep unrest from rising up, to keep people from acting on the hatred and, and those things that are within their heart to keep the peace. That's not what God is talking about. God wants us to be peacemakers, peaks. Makers takes a whole lot more effort because in peacemaking, you have to do the things that change the hearts of individuals. Peacemaking restores relationships and brings harmony. It goes beyond avoiding and separating conflict to bring restoration, relationship, unity. Aren't you glad that the angel there didn't say in on earth, tolerance to those on whom he decided to endure? Or, or possibly put in on earth, God puts up with those on whom his favor rests? It's not about tolerance. It's not about God being willing to come and put up with us. It's not about God coming down here and rolling his eyes um, and trying to, 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 to put up with us. God sent Jesus to come to change us on our very being, in our very inmost parts, to change us into people that not only love God and have relationship with him, but can share that with a world that needs to see and hear the difference. And we live in a world right now that needs to see and hear some peace. We're in the midst of turmoil, midst of struggle. Are we willing to pass the peace in the midst of this pandemic? Because if we're going to pass the peace, we need to have a deeper relationship, a deeper peace with the God that loves us. One of the dangers of this season is getting so caught up in our traditions, wrapped up in trying to cre create this perfect holiday that we forget about the real mission. James 3, 17 and 18 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace deep a harvest of righteousness. This season we should be more concerned with proclaiming the peace of Jesus Christ, centered on living out the gospel with our friends and family, to make those connections with conversations that we have with individuals where we can bring Jesus into the midst of of our celebration, to realize and acknowledge that the world in which we live loves to celebrate Christmas. They just don't fully understand why. And all I'm asking of all of us is that we just share the reason for the season. I've already had people turn their nose up. I've had individuals roll their eyes. You know, it's okay. Let them roll. Share with them anyway. So many times we don't have a deep peace. And when those things happen, we kind of want to rise up and fix it. We want to we tell them how they're goofing up. We want to share with them <clears throat> in Jesus' name. If need be, at the top of our lungs, um, so that they can hear the truth of the gospel. You know, just because we're right doesn't mean we're being righteous. 
And we need to be careful that at this season, this time of year, when more people are open to the gospel than any others, that we actually have a deeper peace, that we might pass that peace along to them, that as we're proclaiming that peace, that we can be heard. I don't know about you, but I have never argued anybody into the kingdom of heaven. I have never jumped up and down, stomped my feet, clapped my hands, and screamed at the top of my lungs, and someone say, oh, oh, I want that. Man, they run away and hide. They don't want that. But you know what? I have seen people through relationship, through way too many cups of coffee, through way too many uh, discussions over the back fence, through way too many opportunities to share all the things that God does on a daily and ongoing basis. I've seen them come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. There are those that I've loved into the kingdom, but I've never browbeat anybody in. And so many times we just want to do that. We just we, we want we want to be heard. We we want the truth to get out, and we're willing to go to any end to make that happen. And the reality is, we scare people away. Are we willing to proclaim a deeper peace, even with our families? Now I know it's tough for families to get together for Christmas. It was difficult at Thanksgiving. We had a great big Thanksgiving meal between. Lynn and Luke and I, and um, it was one of those things where it's, it's difficult to gather together, and I don't know what Christmas is going to bring, but, but you know, we're going to walk down this road one day at a time, but uh, in, in family gatherings, um, oh, it, it seems to be, in family gatherings, someone always is causing a problem. I've heard it say, if no one in your family causes a problem, it's probably your fault. Um, but um, <clears throat> it's one of those, those things where, where we, we gather together, and it seems like a families often will push and, and try to get us upset. They'll try to push us over the edge. They'll try to start an argument because if they start an argument, they don't have to deal with reality. They can deal with this aloof argument that's over here. They can roll their eyes about so-and-so is not very good at arguing. They can, they can come up with all kinds of excuses why they can avoid the truth. But what I found is instead of arguing, if you can just talk about Jesus, if you can just talk about the real meaning and not get upset, it really, really makes a difference. Are we willing to share with those that we love this deeper peace that's well within our hearts? Because when we have a deeper peace, we can really live a life that is peaceful, and, yeah, Lynn, you want to go back in and give me the next slide? Thank you. Um, number four is, is being peaceful. And before you claim peace, you need to possess it. Not that we're perfect. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we were? I can't wait for heaven you know, and, and, and I've heard different individuals say, yeah, I can't wait till I get to heaven because everybody else will be perfect. You know what? I'm looking forward to heaven so I can be perfect um, because I can see all my foibles, mistakes, my difficulties, my shortcomings. They're, they come before me and, and they're huge. The, what I want are the things to be perfect. And I know I'm going to get that in heaven, but I have to live while I'm here. And while I'm here, I need to live being peaceful, to be willing to do those things that the world can see peace within our hearts, that they can see Jesus' life lived out in, in the things that we choose to do and not do. A lot of times we look at Jesus and he was confronted uh, by the Pharisees and, and all kinds of, they tried to goad him into reacting and responding. They tried to pull arguments out of him on an ongoing basis and Jesus just responded in polite truth. Okay, maybe not polite, but in truth in such a way that the argument could never be elevated. Jesus wasn't going to lose that. He was going to proclaim peace all the time, and that's exactly what he did. Are we willing to be truly 
peaceful as the angels there. Peace on whom his favor rests. Does his favor rest upon us that we might truly be able to be peaceful? As it says in 2 Corinthians 10.5, take every thought captive and make it obedient unto Christ so that whether it's inside or outside of our lives, of our being, peace can be seen. When it comes to living peace and proclaiming it, it's possible to lose the battle in our mind before our interaction with others have even begun, have you ever had a fight or disagreement with a family member and the next thing you know, things begin to get out of hand? Are we willing to be peace within our hearts? And then when the argument starts, you can just, no, we're not going to go there. Oh, were you afraid to argue? No, not afraid to argue, just not going to argue. It's, it's a conscious choice to not go down that road. We can talk, I'll discuss but I'm not going to argue because it's pointless. Are we willing to have that peace in our hearts that can overshadow, you know, uh, Uncle Bob or whoever it is in your clan that stirs the pot? man was 63. His name was Alvin Strait. He got a disagreement with his brother Henry, and they were separated by 240 miles, and the two never spoke or met again for 10 years. And when he was 80 years old, Henry had a stroke, and when Alvin heard the news, he decided it was time to reunite with his brother before it became impossible to do so. So at 73, Alvin's sight was too poor for him to get a driver's license, so Alvin loaded up a trailer with gasoline and camping gear and food, and he hooked the trailer onto the back of his riding lawnmower and set off to see Henry. At the top speed of five miles per hour, it took Alvin Strait six weeks to make the 240-mile journey from Iowa to Wisconsin in order to make peace with his brother. One month later, his brother recuperated from the stroke enough that they packed up his house and moved back home together. Ten years wasted 250 miles of separation, and it took a stroke to bring them back together. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, peace is what brings us back together. A willing to put aside those things that have happened in the past and a willingness to come together regardless. Peace. A peace, an enduring peace. A peace that can be shared with the world around us. A peace that heralds the God that loves us. A peace that demonstrates his forgiveness of us. That we might share that forgiveness and peace with everyone that we meet. That, that peace that can be seen in the checkout line at Lowe's. The peace that can be seen when they, they mess up Thanksgiving dinner, or maybe it's Christmas. The peace that is, can be seen when your neighbor puts that great big light that shines in your living room window. That peace that can be seen no matter what happens in life. That's the peace that God gives to us. That we can make a difference in the world because, let's be honest, that kind of peace can be seen and heard in the actions of God's people. Will we be proclaiming peace, passing it, growing a deeper peace that we might share it with the world? Let's bow for prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you that we come together today and we can know your peace, that peace that the angel spoke to the shepherds a peace that comes from you because of sin being pulled out because Jesus came and the, he, he, he lived the life and he sacrificed his life that that sin might be taken away and we can have this relationship with you and know that perfect peace that we might share it with the world because Lord this world needs to see you they see your peace may we be peacemakers in a troubled world. 
these things. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'd ask now at this time you join and join me in our closing hymn. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the new. King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven adored. Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him. Come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in a flesh, the Godhead to see. Hail the incarnate deity. Please, as man with men to dwell. Jesus, our Emmanuel. Hark, the herald angel. Shall sing glory to the newborn king. Hail the heaven born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Light and life to all he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that men no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark, the herald angels sing, glory to the new. We're going to bring our worship service to a close. Um, those who are members of the church, uh, please stick around for a couple of minutes that we do a count so that we can uh, decide whether or not we can move forward with the congregational meeting. It is an open uh, congregational meeting, so if you're visiting with us and you're just curious, feel free to stay. It's quite all right. Um, or if you would like to, to leave, please feel free to do so. Uh, we just like to welcome you and thank you for coming. Um, and so as we go from this place, may God continue to remind us of his peace, that it might touch our hearts and that the world would see the difference that he has made. Amen. <laughs>